this drawing tip can change your life at least as far as your life is concerned with drawing anyway but in order to create room if you like or the place for this tip to work to operate in there are some things we need to stop focusing on we need to stop thinking about talent and creativity and seeing our artworks as some sort of natural expression of this swirling potential within me some sort of innate presence that i just need to release i need to stop thinking that when i sit down to draw i'm producing an artwork that what i'm going to have at the end is an item of artistic value and worth i need to stop my dreams of being freed from the nine to five grind of regular work by becoming a full-time artist and spending every day just doing what is such a joy for me. I need to stop dreaming so much of people flocking to buy my artworks and paying me large sums of money for things that I produce so easily. I need to stop thinking that my artwork is going to be a vehicle for social media success or a vehicle for anything else for that matter. And certainly, we need to stop thinking that if we can just discover the tips, the hacks, the technique, the secrets that will make everything easy and amazing. If we want to be positioned for this tip, which I believe really is the game changer for everyone. So my tip that can change your art journey forever is to stop thinking of these ways, to stop thinking with these focuses and to think a different way. And the irony is that when we stop thinking about these things, when we focus on the thing I'm about to talk about, we may just start the journey that will take us to that place that we've been dreaming of being at. So what's this tip? What's the change? What's the way of thinking that can revolutionize my art journey? And it's all to do with a mindset. I truly believe that the biggest breaks on our drawing improvement comes from ways we think which actually slow us down because the ways we think usually give birth to the things we do. But thinking in itself has never produced an artwork. So often we confuse thinking about art with producing art. Now, of course, we need to be thoughtful about the art we produce and thinking can be part of a process but thinking on its own about art will never produce anything just as we can confuse watching how to draw videos with drawing to think that somehow if we watch enough videos when we go to draw we will have primed the pump so to speak and our drawing will just be amazing because of all the videos we've watched when it doesn't work that way at all so what is the thinking that will transform my art practice, my art journey? What is the thing that will lead me on to ongoing drawing improvement? It's realizing that our drawing and our drawing future all depends on hard work. That's the key. That's the missing link. Realizing that everything else needs to connect with hard work. Hard work, much effort, learning skills and hard work, much effort, practicing those skills. And there is no shortcut for that. There is no hack for that. And I know I just sound like a cranky old man, but it's true. There is no substitute for hard work if I want to see my drawing improve. It takes hard work to learn any skill well, and it takes hard work, a great deal of effort to practice and develop that skill. Whether that skill's playing the piano, whether it's being an elite sports person, whether it's being a horticulturalist, whether it's driving a semi-trailer, whatever it is, hard work and effort are required to do well. It's not just hard work learning the theory, I can study horticulture, but that won't produce a garden. I need to get the shovel and start digging. What we need to continually remind ourselves is that anyone we see who has achieved any measure of success in any field at any age has worked very hard with much effort to get there. And the danger in talking about creativity is that it becomes this la-di-da magic element. 
that causes artworks, in this case, say, drawing, to sprout from our fingertips effortlessly, the way flowers bloom from the ends of their stems. And watching a master at work, it can seem effortless, but it takes an enormous amount of hard work and effort to make something appear effortless. This is so important and I know it's an issue because I see so much impatience with artists. And it is so easy to be impatient with our art, particularly when it's a vehicle for going somewhere. I then want to know how to have success because that's what my art is for and my drawing is going to take me there. So I just need to find out the tips, the hacks that will crack the code, that will uncover the secrets for me, that will speed up my journey. And sadly, the secret is hard work, hard work and effort, hard work and effort, learning the skills I need to learn, becoming aware of what they are, and then hard work and effort putting them into practice. Now, of course, we need to focus our hard work in the right areas. We need to be purposeful and intentional where we put our efforts, or else we could spend a lot of time, waste a lot of time doing hard work to no great value. And I sadly see a lot of that as well, because if I'm putting my effort into trying to find or exploit a shortcut, and because there is no shortcut to drawing success, to drawing improvement, then all that time and effort is going to be very frustratingly wasted because there is no shortcut to putting the time in, the hours in, the effort in. Sometimes looking at the videos that I've seen and hearing people talk, I think that hard work seems to be the best kept secret in how to improve in our art. Why on earth would that be? I think it's partly because we don't see the hard work that other people do. We see the picture on the wall. We see the picture on the print, on the card in the shop. We see the exhibitions. We see the social media posts. We do not see, we possibly have not the slightest idea how much effort and work it has taken them to produce that. And perhaps flowing from that, generally the artist isn't making a big deal about that. People don't usually post things on social media saying, this took me four weeks of solid work to do because, well, it sounds a bit boastful. And if I really enjoy drawing, then even though it's hard work, at times it can be very satisfying hard work as well. And that may disguise from me just how much work I'm actually doing. If I really enjoy, say, walking, it may hide from me the physical effort of walking. So it's easy for enjoyment of my task to disguise the heavy lifting, in fact, that I'm really doing with my effort. And perhaps most importantly, why hard work and effort is such a well-kept secret these days is because you don't win any fans by talking about it. You don't get followers, you don't get subscribers, you don't get supporters because nobody wants to hear we need to work hard. Everybody wants the magic tip. Everybody wants the secret to unlock success, easy success. We want to get to the end result. We want to get to the success faster and faster. Hard work, that sounds very slow and laborious and slow. But the good news, besides the fact that it's later in the day and the sun's not so bright and the wind's not so strong, is that if we're selective in how we work hard, we can still maximize the level of improvement that we achieve with all of our hard work. And I think it's helpful if for as long as possible, our focus is on improvement for improvement's sake. Even where our artwork holds dreams of being an artist, of being financially independent, of some measure of success or a vehicle for going further with something else on social media. Whatever dreams we may have, and there's nothing wrong with dreams, we need to recognize that if we're to draw as well as we can, then we need to focus on the job at hand, which is improving and to realize that that takes hard work and effort. And I think the most helpful way of thinking about, well, how do I do that? How do I apply hard work? Is to realize, of course, that 
when we're learning to draw, we're learning. We can go back to school. We need to go back to school in many ways for reminders of structure, of direction, of the ways in which we learned. Because all the principles of learning that hopefully were applied to us at school still apply ourselves and we can apply them to ourselves. Frequent practice and even repetition of the same thing is good. Every time for one reason or another I've drawn the same drawing twice, I've been surprised at how much I've learned with the second drawing, at how far ahead I start before I put pen on paper. I would go so far as to say that drawing the same drawing twice is a very effective learning experience and a very effective way to rapidly improve on our output. Smaller sessions frequently are far more effective in learning than longer sessions less frequently. Six half hour drawing sessions I believe will give far greater improvement in our drawing than one three hour drawing session much less frequently. We need to start with basic concepts and we need to nail them. We need to really get on top of them because they become the foundation for the next level of difficulty. And if we haven't nailed the lower level, it's a very shaky foundation then for what we're going on to do. And with our enthusiasm for our art, with our enthusiasm with our drawing, and with our enthusiasm for where we hope it may take us one day, it can make us impatient to get to the end and we can start to attempt things that really we have no chance of doing well. And sometimes we have the difficulty of not knowing enough to know that we actually haven't done a really good job with this. We might be impressed, but it may have done nothing for our skill development. I often had answers marked wrong, which I thought were right. I didn't realize I was mistaken. So we mustn't start with the drawings that we hope to do one day. We mustn't start with the drawings that the artists who inspire us are drawing. We need to start at a lower level. Yes, we can work at the same style, we can work at the same sort of subject, but we need to attempt an easier challenge so that we can succeed in it and then move on to a greater challenge. If I keep doing drawings that are too hard for me and therefore I don't do them very well, the only thing I'm going to become good at is producing lots of not very good drawings. We need regular sessions. We need to regularly exercise our creative thinking, our hand-eye coordination, and experimenting with the sort of marks we want to make with whatever instruments we're using on whatever surface we want to use. We need to be regular. And the best way to be regular is to timetable our drawing. Now, depending on the stage of life we're at and the commitments we have, there may not be a great deal of time that we can put aside to drawing. But whatever we can manage, we need to timetable it so that we have a commitment to it and so that the people around us know that we have a commitment to preserving that time for our drawing. And we timetable it because it's work that we need to do. And because it's work, and this is the very important point, because it's work, we need to do it whether we feel like it or not. We need to say, it's time for me to work at my drawing, so I'll put on my work clothes, I'll go to my workplace, and I'll start my work. I won't even think to ask myself, do I want to do it or not? My commitment is to the long-term goal of where I want my drawing to take me, but my commitment today is to work hard with effort to improve, regardless of how I feel. And we need exams. We need to know how we're going. Now, of course, if we're not doing some sort of art course, we're not going to have formal exams or even formal feedback. But we can self-critique our work and we can even ask our friends, how am I going? How do you think this looks? Does this look right? because it's identifying our mistakes that gives us our focus for where we work in the future. Getting this focus by some means is really important in maximizing the end result for all of our work and effort. And I need to recognize that not every teacher will be a good teacher for getting me to the place where I'm trying to get to. So if I'm trying to learn to draw freehand in pen, say, watching and following teaching videos where the artist draws a few lines and then 
I draw those lines in and then they draw a few more lines and I add those lines and they add some more lines and I add some more lines and at the end they finish up with a drawing and at the end I finish up with the same drawing that's not going to get me to the place I'm trying to go if the place where I want to go is to be able to draw my own original drawings freehand because it won't have taught me the skills I need to learn to do that it will have taught me skills to do with copying the artworks of other artists and I presumably would have got better at that but that possibly then gives me a false impression of how good I'm going to be when I draw original works myself freehand because I haven't learnt the thinking which is the fundamental part of doing that and if I'm selecting my teaching materials myself I mustn't be distracted by material which I select because it's entertaining rather than because it's educational for the place I want to be and I need to be organized I need to know before I start a drawing session what I'm going to do I shouldn't be starting a one hour or two hour drawing session flicking through magazines trying to find a reference and then jumping in the car to go to the store to buy a pen all of that needs to be done just in those working periods of life where I'm doing odd jobs so that I'm ready when the time starts to actually start that time drawing so it's just hard work hard work and effort not very popular perhaps sounds a bit old-fashioned but quite frankly it doesn't matter whether I'm using a pencil or procreate it's still hard work and effort if I want to succeed and become excellent in that art form and it's a really important point about not accepting faults in our drawing if we keep drawing things that we aren't drawing correctly for any reason I'm going to become really well practiced at drawing things with those errors in them I'm going to become really good at drawing badly we don't somehow just through time and drawing slide into drawing correctly it doesn't just happen like growing in the background there are actually growth spurts which are the moments we recognize our errors and we learn what we need to learn to correct them the mistakes we accept if we accept them for long enough we will never move beyond them we need to stop worrying about talent and success and roll up our sleeves and get down to the hard work the hard effort of learning a skill and I hope this video is a helpful part of your being able to do that I hope all my videos for those who want to draw freehand in ink are helpful videos in learning to do that g'day I'm Stephen Travers so I hope you are encouraged to roll up your sleeves and to find some time and some more effort to really work at improving your drawings but look whatever you draw however you draw it make sure you have fun I'll see you next time bye